actually go as much as you can actually go to um, uh, his bio on the internet and try to understand exactly what, what, what Prof is doing. But going back to the topic, as we are focusing on basic science, and this is exactly what we've been doing throughout the week, Zong and other institutions presenting the basic science, the practical science actually to the community, which is very much interesting. And then we are concluding with this, um, with an intention of um, allowing Prof to tell us exactly where is South Africa, where is the position of South Africa in terms of science development? Are we doing well? Are we progressing? Are we really catching up even with other nations? And then uh, who are doing that within, within South Africa? I think that's exactly what Prof today is going to give us a, a, a bit of a brief. And then there's something that actually is very interesting, the theory that uh, Prof has, uh, has uh, introduced, I think is, is his philosophy, if I, I'm not mistaken, they call it ima imagineering. It was the first time actually I hear this this way, but I understand exactly where it's coming from. And then the prof is trying to tell us that we are no longer in an information age and we are no longer in a knowledge age. Actually, we are in an age of wisdom. I think that is very much important and it's, it's definitely giving you a very good clarity when you go to um, his website of exactly what he's trying to mean in terms of this. But also it gives an emphasis that um, as much as we keep producing theory in terms of science and uh, every day updating the information on, on the theories, that is not enough. Um, Prof is encouraging that any science discovery should have an impact to, to, to an ordinary man on the street, practically. And that I think is a very good paradigm that actually Prof is, is, is trying to, uh, uh, to teach us that let us have an applied science. Let not our science be academic and be theorized to an extent that it's very complex even to the ordinary people on the ground because we need this, is, this science in order actually for us to, to survive on earth today. So Prof, before I, I will definitely even do a presentation on you, may we please allow you uh, to tell us exactly the discoveries and inventions that we have and we are proudly, um, are proudly South African. Thank you, Prof. Right, thank you very much, uh, Dinasana, for that introduction. <clears throat> and it's a great pleasure for me to contribute in this way to the, the launch of Ditsong's um, National Science Week program. Um, so the question we're gonna be considering is, can South Africa be considered to be influential in science, technology, and innovation? And we're also looking at the theme of National Science Week um, this year, which is the role of the basic sciences. And the basic sciences, of course, are mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology. And we're looking at the role that they provide in developing a fundamental understanding of natural phenomena uh, and processes. Now, before we, whoops, before we go on to, um, the discoveries and inventions, let's do a few definitions. A discovery is revealing a truth that was always there. Okay, so what we're trying to do is understand um, and interpret the processes of nature, which are already there. Uh, we don't have to invent them. We're discovering a truth that exists. And this relates to the natural and the physical world relates to objects, including man-made objects, living organisms and natural phenomena, explanations of natural processes and of patterns of behavior. An invention, on the other hand, is something new that is designed and made by humans for a specific purpose and which is useful to people and sold in the marketplace. My definition of an invention is that there must be more than an idea more than a concept. It must have been taken to fruition and be sufficiently functional and useful to actually already be on sale. 
and it is usually something that improves the quality of life of people and hopefully also the quality of life of the other inhabitants of the planet. It can be high, medium or low tech. It can be a product or a service and it can be visible or invisible. Many modern inventions are invisible. An innovation, on the other hand, is an improvement on someone else's inventions. And because so many things have been invented in the past, most things are innovations. And these innovations improve the original product in that they create something that's more reliable, uh, more cost effective, and makes better use of the latest technology and materials. So, for instance, the first heart transplant, is that an invention or discovery? Well, I think it's a, it's a combination of both because techniques had to be developed, surgical techniques uh, to remove and replace a heart. And that required a very um, deep understanding of human physiology and, and biology and, and surgical techniques. But it also um, you know, was a major discovery that this was possible to be done. Now, one of our leading scientists is Professor Tabella Nyokong, uh, who works in the field of photodynamic cancer therapy at Rhodes University. And she is both a discoverer and an inventor because she's discovering new uh, ways of treating cancer. Uh, but in order to do so, she's also inventing techniques and, and instrumentation uh, to make it possible to do so. But what we're really looking at in inventions is physical objects, visible and invisible. And the wind-up solar-powered wireless on the right is an example, and there's a craft-made wired wireless on the left. Now, I first started um, sharing my interest in South African inventions when we created this um, traveling exhibition, especially uh, for SciFest, and here it is on display in Makanda. And this exhibition subsequently traveled around South Africa and led to uh, several books that I wrote on the topic. And I believe it has greatly increased uh, people's appreciation of just how inventive South Africans are. And our inventiveness goes right back to the beginning of humankind. Uh, the first evidence for the controlled use of fire has been found in South Africa and in Namibia. Now that was an absolutely vital breakthrough because being able to create and control fire allowed humans to do many things. For instance, to create heat, to cook their food and keep themselves warm, to create light, um, to uh, bake clay, and eventually to melt metals, to make tools, and to make tools that make tools. So although fire was not invented by humans, it's a natural phenomenon that occurs in the wild. The controlled use of fire was a vitally important invention. Then around South Africa's uh, long coastline, there are over 3000 middens, which are basically um, kitchen uh, waste that has been discarded by people who lived along our coast uh, but this kitchen waste also includes um, tools, such as tools made from stone and from bone and from shells and eventually from metal. So it's evidence of our first innovation hubs where in the kitchens of um, these early inhabitants, uh, they harvested natural resources and they developed tools to improve their efficiency. So Homo habilis, the handyman, uh, was um, one of the early humanoids that made uh, metal tools. And some of the earliest examples of these tools have been found in South Africa. So I believe that we can claim uh, that we are not only uh, Africa, the cradle of humankind, but also the crucible for innovation. Many very important innovations in early evolution, um, human evolution took place in, in Africa and many of them in South Africa. Just some examples. This is the earliest known abstract artwork uh, found in Blombos Cave. And it's a piece of uh, ochre on which uh, symmetrical patterns have been scratched. We're not sure what these patterns mean, 
but clearly they meant someone, uh, something to the original artist. The oldest um, um, mathematical device in the world called the lunar stick been found in, in, in Border Cave up in Northern Zilliland and has 28 notches cut on it on a bamboo, uh, on a baboon bone. And it's clearly someone is counting something, maybe the number of days in the month or the number of uh, kills made. And then this wonderful golden rhino made out of uh, gold plating uh, found at Mapungupwe is an example of exquisite early technology uh, developed in South Africa. Also in the field of <clears throat> traditional fishing methods, these are Isifonia thrust baskets being used in the Pongola River up in Northern Zululand. And they can catch many catfish and you can see the lady in the middle has a number of catfish hanging from her belt that she's caught using these Fonia thrust baskets. And they are known to harvest um, aquatic resources sustainably. And this is in sharp contrast to many modern techniques and materials that are now being used in fisheries, which do not harvest um, uh, resources sustainably. Now, there are many examples uh, in South Africa of how indigenous knowledge has been beneficiated by a uh, production of commercially sold goods. And one of them is this mosquito repellent candles developed by the CSR and based on a knowledge by local people of the different plants that have mosquito repellent uh, properties. Kelp is another example of a product that's been used for centuries. And now modern uh, science has allowed uh, a variety of kelp products to be developed uh, as, as soil um, fertilizers and, and, and water attractants, and also in food uh, that humans eat. And kelp has also been used to develop uh, vuvuzelas from kelp, called kelpuzelas, which are colorfully decorated, as shown here. Um, South Africa is blessed with a wide variety of aloes, and the juice from aloes has been used uh, for centuries. Uh, for grooming products, for healthcare crop products, and also for adding to eats and drinks. And once again, Western science has used that basic knowledge and developed uh, commercial products. And another example is bitter harp, which is a succulent that grows um, in the Northern Cape and which has been uh, traditionally used by sand hunter gatherers. Uh, they suck it to reduce. Uh, their appetite and their thirst so that they can go on a long uh, hunting trips. And that is now available as a commercial product. Another example that we're all familiar with is a uh, rooibos tea. Um, rooibos, uh, the um, uh, extracts from the rooibos plant, which is an indigenous species, have been used in infusions um, made by local people for centuries but it was a Russian immigrant, uh, Benjamin Ginsberg, who came from a Russian uh, tea uh, farming family who first uh, saw the commercial potential of it. And rooibos tea is now known all over the world uh, for its, its health giving properties and uh, the fact that it doesn't have caffeine. And you can now buy uh, many combinations of, of rooibos, including one with hoodia. Another tea derived from an indigenous plant is honeybush tea, um, also becoming extremely popular worldwide. And buchu, uh, since the 1930s, um, scientists have been studying the active ingredients in buchu, and they're known to have many health giving properties, and that's laid the foundation for a major industry. Moving on to uh, more advanced uh, agricultural techniques, in Cape Town, there's uh, one of the most advanced companies in the world that uses drones um, to monitor the health of agricultural plants. So Aerobotics has these uh, drones with high resolution cameras, and they're not able to, only able to monitor the health of an orchard or in a tree, but even of individual leaves uh, based on the color of the leaf and other qualities. 
An interesting, um, simple um, invention, but very effective, was developed by ESCOM and the Endangered Wildlife Trust. It's called a bird flapper, and it's attached to overhead electrical cables and it has a, a solar panel. And this flapper uh, moves back and forth and making a sound that um, discourages birds from settling on the electrical cable and being electrocuted. Uh, Dr. Matoni Masundi is, is a classic example of someone who's used uh, knowledge of ba the basic sciences to develop a very useful product. Uh, she uh, grew up in rural Kenya, where their father and uncles, she noticed, used traditional knowledge and their own observations to predict important uh, weather events, such as droughts and also agricultural events, such as when to plant seeds and when to harvest. But she realized that although this indigenous knowledge was valuable, um, it was inaccurate in its predictions. So she developed an app called Itiki, uh, which combines um, Western meteorological data with traditional knowledge. And she subsequently completed a PhD on this topic at UCT. And she's now employed in South Africa in developing this concept where we combine uh, traditional knowledge um, and modern science. Here's another um, unusual approach to um, growing uh, natural resources. AgriProtein is a farming project developed by Jason and David Drew north of Cape Town. And they uh, culture millions of these black flies for the maggots uh, because the maggots are very nutritious food uh, for chicken and other farm stock and also for fish culture. Uh, elephants are quite a serious problem when they um, overpopulate an area because it can be very destructive. And this has been experienced in the Kruger National Park and in Moremi Game Reserve and elsewhere. And now um, South African veterinary scientists have developed a contraceptive uh, which uh, can control the breeding rate of elephants. Many um, low-key or low-tech um, inventions in South Africa help to improve the quality of life of rural people. And one of them is the hippo drum, which makes it much easier for young women to transport uh, water from the river uh, back to their houses. And here's another example of an excellent rural invention. It's a children's roundabout, which has been connected to an underwater pump and that pump pumps water into the header tank on top of the tower and provides uh, running water for the village. Uh, Ludwig Moreshani, uh, he was head boy of his school and he subsequently created a company um, called Head Boy Industries. And one of the inventions that he's made uh, is dry bath, uh, which is a kind of gel that you can use to wipe on yourself to, uh, to stay clean in areas where water is scarce. Um, some other interesting inventions back in 1965, uh, Mona Bentley invented the Bentley belt, which has helped thousands of children to learn to swim. And then also on the, on the right, the Bumbo baby seat, uh, which helps babies, uh, young babies sit up straight. Now, moving on to some industrial inventions, a remarkable early inventor from South Africa was James Greathead. He was a, a farmer's son from Grahamstown, Makonda. Uh, he went to St. Andrews College and then to bishops in Cape Town and subsequently emigrated to England. And he pre had a profound uh, knowledge of physics and mathematics and eventually also of electronics and mechanics. And he is known as the father of the London Underground. And there you can see on the right, a statue of him uh, commemorating his contributions. And the reason for this is that he invented the apparatus that was used for drilling the first tunnels of the London underground called the Great Head Shield and also the Great Head Grouting Machine. And um, these uh, machines not only drilled the tunnels, but cemented the tunnel to, to consolidate it. And then later, he was also involved in the electrification of underground and surface railways um, in England. Another remarkable uh, South African invention was the JB radar transmitter uh, developed by uh, Basil Shonland and his team at Wits University. 
1939, at the beginning of the Second World War. Um, at that time, Great Britain appealed uh, to allies to develop their own radar system because they didn't have enough to provide everyone with radar. And the South Africans were so successful that their JB radar transmitter named after Johannesburg was widely used um, in East and especially in North Africa um, during the Second World War and proved to be a more versatile instrument than that that had been developed in Britain. And then uh, the person I rate as South Africa's greatest inventor, if we don't include Elon Musk, uh, is Trevor Wadley, who was active in the 40s, 50s and 60s and developed a wide range of um, inventions based on radio waves. Uh, the Wadley Loop, the Wadley Broad Lap Brand Radio, the All Wave Communications Receiver, et cetera, et cetera. And these were world leading radios. They were used, for instance, by the BBC for international broadcast. And some of his radios uh, are still popular among radio hams uh, worldwide. But his greatest inventor invention was the radio telerometer, which used radio microwaves to accurately measure long distances for surveying. And here you can see an early version of that telerometer. Um, which sold internationally and uh, was really the leading distance measuring machine in the world for nearly 30 years. There's Wadi uh, testing his radio telerometer. He was a remarkable man, a tinkerer right from the childhood. Uh, I've written extensively about him and I really encourage you to read his life story. It's a fascinating account of how a young man became an absolute genius uh, in radio and radar. And there he is demonstrating his uh, telerometer in England. And uh, the British Prime Minister at the time was, was heard to say, you know, why didn't we invent this? It's so obvious. And that is a characteristic of, of a great invention, that once it's invented, it seems so obvious, but someone's got to do it. And the telerometer was used extensively all over Africa, for instance, for mapping out and surveying the entire road system in Kenya, uh, for the surveying of the Kobora Basab Dam uh, in Mozambique, and also extensively in North America, uh, Europe, and, and Asia. And there we can see telerometers in use in Wales, Greenland, Canada, and Switzerland and also extensively used in, in Antarctica. And the company, uh, Telumat Plessy, um, that made the um, radio telerometers, also through another South African invention, Dick Holscher, inventor Dick Holscher, uh, developed an even more accurate telerometer called the infrared telerometer, which was used over short distances, uh, for instance, for uh, surveying harbors. Um, so these were really world needing products uh, of which we can be very proud. Then we probably all heard of uh, Percy Tucker, who invented CompuTicket, which was the first computerized ticketing system in the world. In fact, it was so ahead of its time that it took another 18 years before a comparable system was developed in another country. And then another inventor we're very proud of is Mark Shuttleworth. Uh, who uh, flew into space, but most importantly for us, on his return, developed a wide range of applications, especially in open source software, such as Ubuntu, uh, which have facilitated access uh, to computer services. And then uh, Louis Liebenberg uh, developed the Cyber Tracker, which is a palm top computer with a built in GPS. And as you can see, it's got icon-based um, interface rather than letters and numbers. And this allows um, the data uh, to be collected from illiterate but very knowledgeable uh, SAN hunters. Um, and it also allows them to input their data themselves. So it's a, it's a wonderful uh, example of how modern technology is uh, recording indigenous knowledge. Um, Alan Cormack on the right was South Africa's first nuclear physicist, uh, worked at UCT and also in North America. And he developed the algorithms for the first uh, uh, CAT scanner, 
which is a three-dimensional x-ray device, which is now used in every major hospital in the world. Uh, Cormac didn't have the means to take the product to the market. And this was done by Godfrey Hounsfield, a medical technologist working in England for EMI. And uh, together they, they won the Nobel Prize for their contribution. Um, there's a model on the bottom right of the prototype CAT scanner developed by um, uh, Alan Cormack um, and uh, some images uh, at the top of the brain taken by CAT scanner. And there you can see the modern CAT scanner. Uh, it's really regarded as the machine that took medicine into the information age and has been rated the 53rd greatest invention of all time. And interestingly, of the top 100 inventions made in the world, it's the only one um, from the Southern Hemisphere. And you may wonder what are the Beatles doing on the top left there? Well, I mentioned that, um, that Hounsfield worked for a company called EMI. EMI had two divisions, a medical research division for which he worked and a, a, a music recording division. And it so happened that at the time the CAT scanner was being taken to the market, the Beatles had been contracted by EMI and some of the profits uh, from the Beatles um, records were plowed into the development of the machine. So there we can see uh, the top inventions um, as listed by the American uh, science historian, uh, Philbin, uh, the wheel and light bulb and so on, top two. Number 53 is a CAT scanner. Now, like all great inventions, uh, the CAT scanner led to other inventions. One of them is LODOX, which is a low dose X-ray machine that was initially developed by De Beers in South Africa to uh, vent miners stealing diamonds by swallowing them and then leaving the mining complex. And by going through this low dose X-ray, um, the company could quickly detect whether diamonds had been swallowed or not. But Lodox was found to be so useful uh, for quick um, surveys, uh, analyses of whether bones have been broken, that it's now widely used in the casualty units and emergency uh, rooms of hospitals worldwide. And another example developed by Cape Tonian Kit Vaughan is the Assesco breast imaging system, which is also a 3D X-ray machine. In Johannesburg, back in 1965, uh, Dr. Percy M. Wells, uh, who's an ophthalmologist, developed the cryoprobe, uh, which used a frozen tip to, um, to help resolve uh, various problems of the eye, including cataracts. And he famously operated on Nelson Mandela and Margaret Thatcher and other people and uh, basically secured miraculous cures to their eye diseases. The wind-up radio uh, was first developed by Trevor Bayliss in England. He developed a clockwork version, and the idea was that this clockwork radio, which didn't require batteries or electricity, would give people in rural areas of uh, Africa access to medical and other information. But this concept was taken further by a company called in South Africa called Freeplay, which developed a, a much more robust um, wind-up uh, system. And this has now been extensively used for making not only radios, but also torches and cell phone chargers. And most importantly, it's also now gone into uh, the development of wind-up medical equipment, such as pulse oximeters and fetal heart rate monitors. The fetal heart rate measures the, um, monitors the uh, heart rate of the unborn baby inside the mother. And having these tools available with don't require batteries or electricity, and therefore can be used in, in, in rural clinics has been extremely important. Uh, at UCT, uh, Professor Kili Shabali um, has done amazing work uh, in developing a one pill malaria treatment and in uh, the CSR in uh, Pretoria, uh, a PhD student from the University of KwaZulu Natal, uh, Sandili and Gopa, uh, together with Professor Phillips and others, was the first in the world to develop a 3D laser system, 
which has found applications uh, in many different industries. And once again, a thorough knowledge of the basic sciences made this invention possible. Uh, locally, uh, Lucky Netshadzati, uh, his parents were deaf and dumb and he had difficulty communicating with them. So he developed this uh, amazing talking globe, which converts sign language into voice and text. Now, we're probably all uh, familiar with the Dolos, uh, named after the knuckle bones of a sheep. And this was uh, something developed by the harbour master in East London, Eric Merrifield, and his draftsman, Aubrey Kruger. And uh, Dolos's are used to um, prevent coastal damage by storm waves and, and so on. And they work not by blocking the energy of the sea, but by dissipating it. And uh, dollars are now used in, in over 100 countries uh, worldwide. And there you can see the action of the do dollars. It breaks the energy of the wave. Uh, at the deep water harbor near Port Elizabeth at Ankura, the largest dollars in the world, weighing 30 tons each, uh, are, are, have been used to line the harbor walls. Dollars have also been used for other purposes, for instance, uh, creating artificial reefs in, on, on the marine coast, uh, such as in Algoa Bay and in um, uh, large dams. And the Americans have even used them as anti-tank barriers. And the Dallas has been such an important invention that there are Dallas memorials all over the world, uh, not only in South Africa, but in the USA, in, in Iceland, uh, and, you, and, um, and in Europe. There are many uh, devices have been designed to um, reduce the impact of waves on the coastline and on marinas, uh, but of all of them, the Dolos has proved to be the most successful design. Of course, our major industries such as Sasol um, and Petroza, uh, within them, thousands of patents have been registered for inventions um, and, and innovations which improve their efficiency. Uh, looking at some various others, um, the jackpot is a, a, a device that's used at the top and bottom of mine props. Uh, the Shoshaloza gum boot is a very hardy boot used by mariners. And then dust watch is, is a, an apparatus for measuring the amount of dust in the atmosphere um, from different directions. Mulalo de Yoyo uh, is a serial uh, inventor and technology entrepreneur from South Africa. He's worked extensively in the USA as well as in South Africa. And he, he develops high-tech things like um, the IE Fambani uh, hydrogen motorbike and Bioxio universing testing machine. But his main focus is on the use of waste products to cre create useful products, such as his Sinocell cementless concrete and his Amora Guard uh, paint uh, for um, outside walls and roofs and also for tiles. And Sio Bolele Kusa, uh, nicknamed our rocket man, he first came to fame when he developed a series of rocket fuels and, and successfully competed in various science expos around the world. And he's following in Malala Dioya's footsteps in developing the uh, potential of waste products. Prati Patti uh, is a well-known South African invention first developed by George Prattley and continued by his son, Kim, uh, with hundreds of, of patents registered. And Prattley Putty was the first South African invention to go to the moon. Uh, it went on the Ranger uh, moon module in 1967 and also used to repair the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Uh, Q20, uh, developed by Bob Robertson in, in Howick, is, is a well-known uh, product uh, in South Africa and elsewhere. And even the uh, plastic super cart, um, the um, supermarket cart that replaced the metal ones developed by Michael Wolf in South Africa in 1995. Um, one of the reactions to the Sputnik um, was the development of space science in South Africa and this is uh, the first microsatellite developed locally at the University of Stellenbosch. And the Sunset was launched by NASA on a Delta II rocket in 1999. 
and it had very high resolution cameras on board. And Sunset has been followed by a whole suite of very high tech microsatellites uh, developed and launched uh, in South Africa. And of course, our two um, mega um, projects on astronomy are SALT, um, which light astronomy, and then um, SKA dealing with radio astronomy. And both are world leading products, and especially SKA, which uh, will involve several other African countries and also Australia, uh, is taking uh, South Africa to the absolute forefront of technology. They, we can see one of the SKA uh, uh, prototype dishes being installed. And this is an example of an, a dish in Ghana at, at Kuntunzi, uh, which uh, was initially for uh, communications and which is now joining the SKA array. And as with our other big science projects, uh, SKA is developing a range of incredible inventions. This is the reconfigurable application board, SCARAB, which can be continually reconfigured uh, as discoveries are made and, and, and new uh, techni uh, techniques are necessary. Then going back a bit to transport, um, Dr. Herbert Scheffel was an engineer with South African Railways. And he noticed that uh, our, um, a lot of efficiency was being lost by friction um, on our railways uh, because the uh, railway bogies had sort of fixed chassis, fixed rectangular chassis. So he developed the Scheffel bogey, uh, which had a, a flexible chassis, uh, which greatly reduced uh, friction. In Richards Bay, Bell trucks uh, were developed by Irvin Vine Bell and, and his sons and are world leaders in the class of heavy haulage. John Myers uh, was the co-inventor of South Africa's very first car, the Protea, uh, back in 1956. Um, and there's, you can see a Protea Triumph, which was a competitive uh, sports car uh, in action at Kailami. And around about the same time, the GSM Flamingo and also the Dart were developed in South Africa. And more recently, the Jewel electric car, a beautifully designed vehicle, designed by Optimal Energy, uh, which unfortunately never went into commercial production. And then most recently, this monster truck, a hydrogen hybrid uh, uh, truck uh, developed um, in South Africa with a 290 ton uh, payload. Of course, Elon Musk, whether we can claim him or, or not is, is another matter uh, because PayPal was really the only thing that he invented when he was in South Africa. And there he is with Peter Thiel, the co-inventor of PayPal. But of course, Elon has gone on to do marvelous things, not only with his Tesla electric cars, uh, the Dragon space capsule, and the Vulcan 9 rocket, uh, rocket through his company SpaceX, but also concepts such as Solar City on Mars and uh, his Hyperloop uh, uh, supersonic capsule transport system, uh, which is still in the concept stage. Uh, interestingly, um, Musk is one of those who has warned us about the uh, possible dangers of the misuse of robotics and artificial intelligence. And uh, he, you know, he has reckons we need to exercise caution as to how we develop uh, these modern technologies. Then going back home, uh, South Africa is really the king of the pool cleaners. Virtually every major uh, pool cleaning device driven by the water pump of the pool has been developed locally. Although sadly, all of these brands are now owned uh, internationally. So Creepy Crawly and Barracuda are probably the best known ones, but also Zodiac and others. So there's a Zodiac Pacer, very advanced uh, pool cleaner. And this is the pool cup, uh, which allows you to monitor the quality of your water uh, from the comfort of your lounge. Another example of a domestic uh, device is the Jetmaster freestanding fireplace. Um, a, a keen understanding of, of basic science led to the design of this, um, which heats up the, the whole room. 
Another device we can claim is the Cobb cooker, uh, invented by Ken Hall in 1984. Although if you go to the Cobb website, uh, you'll find that the Australians claim they made that invention. And on the right, the butt torch tong, a simple one. When you close the tong, a torch signs, so you can see whether you're burning your burrows or not. Uh, as a very useful invention by uh, Zodrangwani Tamide, in 2003, it's a beeping kettle uh, for use by blind people. And it allows them to pour hot water into a cup. And there's a, a sensor which uh, can beeps, which tell, tells them when the cup is about to be full. Uh, if we look at military inventions, we can go back to Shaka, who, who developed many successful strategies uh, with the claw-like formation of his impis, his large shields and his short stabbing spears. But more uh, recently, um, South Africa has developed a wide range of, of military and uh, personnel carriers. Uh, perhaps the most famous of them, bottom left, is the Casper. And there's the Casper in action. It's a, an, an armed, uh, armored anti mine uh, personnel carrier. Now, in order to lend a peaceful um, look to the Casper, this magnificent beaded Casper was produced recently using Ndebele colors and, and beads. Here it is on display outside the South African National Gallery in Cape Town, uh, but it is, has in fact toured around the world. And this same technique, uh, similar to it, has been used for instance by Esther Mashlangu, who famously painted uh, some uh, BMWs, which became big sellers worldwide. And a, a relative of Esther, uh, Sophia Mashlangu uh, now takes it to bicycles and creates these wonderful beaded bicycles. Also on the military front, uh, the Roy Falk helicopter, an uh, innovation in South Africa, and even the Zuckerman civilian protective helmet uh, was developed locally. Uh, Henry Johnson uh, was um, employed by the South African Navy, where he was a ballistics expert. And he used his basic knowledge of mathematics and especially of trigonometry uh, to convert his, his, his knowledge of ballistics to the development of devices for measuring the speed and trajectory of sports balls, such as tennis balls, cricket balls, and, 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 and so on. And these are now uh, used worldwide. Bright weights were developed um, in South Africa in 1996 to distribute the weights of, 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 on a scuba diver. And uh, Peter Volender developed the Walland Air a parafoil kite, which led to the development of a whole new sport. The brush tee, um, developed by Brian Stone Oval and, and his team, based on a concept uh, developed by someone else, but nevertheless highly successful and used worldwide. And Brian Stone Oval also enveloped the game of golf, which is a kind of combination of croquet and golf, which you can play on your back lawn. Uh, the JSI, uh, JS1 Revelation uh, glider uh, was also developed in South Africa and is a new class of competitive glider. And Johan Lutz developed these innovative sit in, sit on kayaks um, out of fiberglass, uh, which are used for recreational as well as as well as uh, competitive kayaking. So that, that's just a quick overview of some of the inventions uh, that I've discovered in and written about in my various books. And I'd now like to uh, ask you, the, the listener, you know, which of these inventions uh, do you think you, you could possibly make? Handheld video phones, walking ladders, firefighting robots, and so on. Well, they're all exciting things and they would also all be useful, but in fact, all of, almost all of them already been made. The only ones we're still busy on are, are indicated in red. Solar cells with an efficiency of more than 50%, video postcards, 3D video conferencing, and earth, earth orbiting solar power stations. So those are four that maybe you can work on. But perhaps you, you would like to orientate your energy in a more low-tech direction. How about developing a bicycle-powered lawnmower? 
or a, a, a raft made out of empty plastic bottles, or a radius receiver with a wicker basket, or this um, water pump um, driven by a, a, a small motorbike. Slightly higher tech ones that have recently been developed, great ideas. On the top left, a, a, a table which folds out uh, for use in bed. Top right is a, a fever pajamas, which uh, change color according to the, the baby's body temperature. And if the baby's body temperature goes over normal, the, the, the pajamas become bright blue and that alerts the parents uh, to a potential fever. Uh, bottom left, an interesting concept for a comfortable seat. And bottom right, a very obvious one, a butter knife that, that in which the blade heats up. So there's still lots of inventions uh, out there for you to make. And I hope this talk has stimulated your innovation juices. So to answer the question I posed right at the very beginning, yes, I think South Africa is very influential in science, technology and innovation through the impact of its own inventions and discoveries, the influence its scientists have um, worldwide and especially in Africa, the fact that it's become a crucible for innovation for visiting scientists and innovators who can use our infra uh, excellent infrastructure for their further inventions. So I believe that these are some of the characteristics of innovation in South Africa. We have a strong spirit of entrepreneurship. We have both commercial and social entrepreneurs. The commercial ones tend to be for profit um, entrepreneurs, whereas social ones are, are looking more for providing value uh, in social circumstances. We have geographic advantage areas, for instance, for astronomy and for marine biology. We have a high diversity of plants and animals, uh, which um, has resulted in a rich indigenous knowledge, which we're starting to beneficiate through useful products. Um, we have a strong sustainable living ethic and a lot of inventions today uh, are towards that goal. We have a number of big science projects uh, that are developing remarkable um, inventions and innovations. And then we also have, together with the rest of Africa, the so-called demographic dividend. In other words, the average age of our population is less than 20 years. That gives us a distinct advantage over the older countries in the Northern Hemisphere, but there are so many young people coming through the system. So I think we can conclude from what I've said that the basic sciences of mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology do play a crucial role in our understanding of natural phenomena and processes and they lay the foundation for technological development. As, as has been said, the science of today is the technology of tomorrow. And these are the books in which I've um, outlined um, South African inventions that I've come across, great South African inventions, uh, what a great idea, awesome South African inventions. Uh, Curious Notions uh, is a, ref a series of essays um, on my involvement in science and technology and includes a chapter on who is South Africa's greatest inventor. And here are some of those that are considered um, in those books and I'm sure you'll recognize a few of them. And then uh, my most recent book is called Harambi, The Spirit of Innovation in Africa. And this, in this I try to, um, to highlight some of the inventions made in over 50 different African countries which are contributing uh, to the worldwide effort. And I conclude in that book, among many other uh, conclusions, that the spirit of innovation in Africa is based on it being developed at all levels from low, medium to high tech. And this provides a step ladder for advancement, maximizes our dem demographic dividend, and uh, is characterized by determined individuals, many of them young people from disadvantaged environments, who are unafraid of failure and are quickly get up and start again. Uh, a lot of our inventions focus on natural resources and social issues, and there's a strong problem solving ethic um, in uh, the spirit of innovation in Africa. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Prof. I think I'm not even going to repeat exactly what you have said. You have covered 
all fields where development actually took place in South Africa, uh, military, health, um, the list is so long. But this is what I'm going to do now quickly before we take question. Uh, we're going to ask a question. The one who's going to type on the chat, giving us an answer, is going to receive the three copies of books that Prof. just actually showed us on the screen. Uh, be prepared and be very quick because we're going to take the first person that actually completed the answer on the chat. And this is the question. Which organization developed bed flapper? Answer that question quickly. The first one that to get that answer right is going to get uh, the three copies you're going to send because you've got emails of everyone. Uh, I think we can take question quickly um, as much as actually we are running out of time. Any question? I think let's try another question. Ah, oh, there we have an answer. Is not correct. We are looking for which organization developed the, the developed the bait flapper. Which organization developed uh, the bait flapper in South Africa? So you can do the you can answer the question on the other side, but let us check questions quickly, Prof, before we, we run out, out of time of question and answers. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I just want to thank Prof for a very fascinating talk um, which traced the history of discovery and innovations uh, from you know, the earliest humans who, who inhabited South Africa. I'm just so fascinated. Um, uh, you know, some of these things we take for granted because we, we, we grew up and they were there and we never, you know, you don't even process the fact that somebody sat down and developed a concept and saw it into an innovation or, a, you know, something was discovered. It's just so fascinating to listen to all of these um, inventions and discoveries. Thank you so much, Prof. A fascinating talk. Uh, that's a pleasure. I must say, you know, with the knowledge I've developed of South African invention, it's great fun traveling around the country and seeing things that we have invented and which are now being used all over the world. It makes mm -hmm. one very proud to be a South African. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you very much. Um, at the background, um, Lemohe Muhapi is uh, one of the directors of the zone. Thank you for, um, for your wait. Thank you very much. Is there any question? Any hands raised? Okay. I'm not seeing any, any hands raised. And then... Um, I think this will definitely go into lead us to the conclusion of the presentation. I think, Prof, the information is so huge. I think we will need another presentation so that we can continue this um, as much as it's very much interesting. And uh, I had also you highlighted on indigenous knowledge system, which was one of the presentation that we did. Um, it's, it's, it's really very interesting. To, to match the modern science and also indigenous knowledge and see the type of product that actually can come out there for ordinary use in our daily life. Uh, thank you very much. We, we have a winner who actually got it right. Um, and then uh, we, we, will, we will definitely email the three copies. We will email the three copies to, to the person. And then uh, is, is one of the volunteers actually. Um, 
um, it's one of the volunteers that then we are going to try to actually send that particular copy to, uh, to the person. Is there any, we are just left with only two minutes so that we can conclude the interesting presentation. Is there any last um, hand to give a comment or to ask a question? Okay. And uh, Dr. Mahapi, I can see uh, Lamohang also, but let me start with Dr. Mahapi again. It's not, it's not a question to prof, but um, we, I think it would really be nice to know who won and what is the answer because there, there are a few questions, I mean, answers there. Could you help us with that? <laughs> on, on, on the chat, there's quite a few answers. That is ESCOM. And then the EW, yeah, EWT, those are the, the, the first people actually to, do, to, to develop the bed flappers that we found on, on, on our uh, electrical wiring. And then uh, the, the name on the, on the system is MNE Volunteer. That's, that's what we're, we're seeing is the person that actually won um, the, the three copies, and we are going definitely to make sure that we deliver those copies to the person. We don't have title yet, but the, um, it will be um, one of the books that actually were mentioned by Prof. Thank yes. you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I've seen I've seen a hand before. I'm happy, Lamahang, are you still there? Okay, thank you, been, you. Thank you very much. You've been unmuted. Yes, my question was um, if Prof could repeat the name of the lady who invented the wind up solar powered wireless, please. Okay, it was actually a team of people at the Free Play um, uh, Wind Up Radio Company, uh, so it can't be attributed to any single person. But the, the, the lady who was holding it up was actually one of the volunteers um, in the Cape Town Science Center who was facilitating use of the Great South African Inventions Exhibition. Uh, thank you very much. I think Lamahang was our last uh, person to ask a question. Um, I would like to thank everyone who actually participated in this program. And then uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof, for enlightening information of exactly what is happening in South Africa and uh, the direction that South Africa actually is, is current and its position actually in terms of technology. We really appreciate the presentation. And um, I would like to say thank you to everyone and we are going to close our program. I'm quite sure that Prof will be in contact so that we can do more program uh, as far as science and technology is concerned. Oh, no, please, I, you know, I'd like to encourage uh, listeners to obtain copies of these books, and not only for their personal uh, use, but also as gifts for younger people and for the libraries of their science centers and museums, because it's very important that we spread this knowledge. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, for those who will ask, we will share your contact and then they can be able to contact you directly to obtain the copies. Yes. Um, Thank you, everyone, everyone, and then we can actually close the program. Thank you. <laughs>